8.74 million. That's a big number. That's roughly the population of one of the biggest cities on our planet, London, in Britain. Now, that's just one population from this one species, humans. There's 7 billion of us. Uh, but there are, on this planet, about 8.74 million species. We're just one of those species. An equivalent thought would be to consider that for every human being living in London, Britain, one of our biggest cities on the planet, there is an entire species with their own populations on this earth. Wow, that kind of extraordinary number brings in a lot of questions, like how big are each of these populations, which species is the biggest, which is the smallest, but to me the most intriguing question that comes from that is where did all those species come from? Questions that explore origins are part of human nature. We love those deep questions. It's that love for the deepest understanding that drives us to come up with some sort of method of answering those questions. So far humans have come up with two methods uh, that help us approach those deep understandings, one of them being religion and the other one being science. So what does the science have to say about this big deep question? Where did all of those species come from? Before diving into that question, let me point something out. Science, in all the amazing things that it does for us, it's not perfect. Any scientist will agree with that. But it is a very powerful tool. It's probably the best tool we've ever created. We've always been tool makers. Science is amazing. But we've been limited in our biology so far because we haven't been able to answer one really tough question. Where did life start? Now, we're not going to try and dive into that question. That's that one we haven't been able to answer yet. We've got lots of hypotheses, but we don't have any conclusive evidence as to where life started yet. So we're not going to worry about that one. So let's just think about where all the different species came from. We have been able to answer that question. Specifically, we've been able to figure out how the species have diversified. So how we went from life, starting somewhere, into so many different types of life on this planet. All of those 8.74 million different species. So to answer that question, we're going to have to redefine our original question a little bit. Where did all those species come from? Because what we're really talking about there is something called biological diversity. Biological diversity is uh, the, it's a measure of the number of species, the number of different species in an area. So if we're going to define the number of species in an area, we also have to describe the area. So let's start with the different areas on the Earth. Let's start with the Earth. If we're going to talk biological diversity of the Earth, we're going to be talking about all of the 8.74 million species that exist on the Earth. A total is a useful number, for sure, but it's perhaps more useful to look at smaller sections. So let's take that down one notch and look at biomes. So instead of looking at the whole Earth, we're going to be looking at bands around the Earth. A biome is a section on the Earth that has similar ecosystems. So all the way around, including in Alberta and a lot of Canada, there is this boreal forest, these coniferous forests. That There's a band of those trees all the way around uh, the, the mid-northern part of the earth, um, going all the way around to Europe and Russia, all the way back to all the way back to where we are here in Canada. Each biome has some sort of significance. Um, the, the boreal forest, along with the other temperate forests, tropical rainforests, they tend to act as the lungs of the earth. They serve to remove CO2 and replace it with a very important molecule, oxygen, through photosynthesis. Even deserts have a significant value on the earth. So if we need to be concerned about the different ecosystems on the earth, 
We need to know if those ecosystems are healthy or not. So a diversity index is a mathematical calculation that looks at the healthiness of an ecosystem by examining the variation within that ecosystem. It basically looks at an area and calculates how many different species are within that given area. So if you had a square kilometer and you counted up all the different species in that area, a healthier ecosystem would have more species in that area. There are lots of ecosystems with high biological diversity. There are some with extremes, like with uh, jungles and rainforests and coral reefs. The amount of different kinds of life in those tiny areas is astonishingly high. There's huge numbers of different species there. There are some places on the earth that have such extreme conditions that you would think that life just pretty much shouldn't or can't live there. But man, everywhere we look, we still tend to find life. For example, one crazy place is in the bottom of the oceans. There are volcanic vents that are poking up out of the bottom of the ocean floor, several kilometers beneath the, the surface of the water. And these are volcanic vents, huge amounts of heat, huge amounts of toxic gas coming up, and we've found life there. We found bacteria cells that have managed to make a home there. Life that exists in really crazy places like that they're called extremophiles. They live in extreme habitats and they are generally really different. Um, in places like this though, the biological diversity is really low. A diversity index only tells the overall picture of how healthy an ecosystem is. Uh, but there's more to it than that as well. Uh, if you want to dig a little bit deeper, uh, to an ecosystem, you also have to look at the individual populations within that ecosystem. So think of a forest ecosystem, just for example. Imagine there's populations of rabbits, populations of flowers, populations of shrubs and deer. And uh, within each of those populations, we can also measure the healthiness of one of those populations by measuring the variety within that population. Just like we do with an ecosystem, we measure the variety of different species within an ecosystem, within an area. Uh, we can measure the healthiness of a population by measuring the variety of the animals or plants that exist within a single species. Imagine your school. It's made up of primarily one species, humans. Uh, but think of the variety of humans within that school. Uh, the population has a huge variety. Even within your classroom, think of the physical appearances. You've got different heights, different widths, different eye color, hair color, skin color. Everything physically is different between people. Even within twins, there's some small variations. So each population of humans, whether we're talking different school, different city, different country, uh, each population of humans is teeming with variety um, and each ecosystem has a huge amount of variety itself so why this brings us back full circle this brings us back to our original question of where did all these species come from as I said we needed to redefine our question a little bit because Biodiversity is an important concept so instead of saying where did all these species come from let's perhaps say, where did all of the diversity come from? That is an awesome question, because that question is going to start your journey down exploring the very framework of all biology, the concept of evolution. It's going to be a heck of a journey, and we're just going to scratch the surface, but the key thing I want you to take away from this lesson is that there is a huge amount of variety within species and there's a huge amount of variety between species. That variety is important. We are going to explore the importance 
of that variety and where that variety came from. The rest of this whole subject is going to be exploring uh, those couple of questions, those concepts. In order to understand those concepts, we're going to have to look at a pretty cool molecule, one that is kind of the basis of how it all happens. That is DNA. Till next time.